Hey everyone, this screencast is going to transition us from the light reactions of the uh, photosynthesis to the Calvin cycle. So if you remember the, the diagram, the overview diagram, the Calvin cycle had several inputs. So just thinking about the Calvin cycle, one of the, the major inputs is CO2 from the atmosphere. That's one of the major uh, significant inputs for the Calvin cycle actually. There were several other inputs though that were generated from the light reactions. If you recall, one of them was ATP. And the second one was this thing called NADPH. So all of these uh, inputs, all these reactants are going into the Calvin cycle. What the Calvin cycle does ultimately is to make sugar. Okay, the sugar is used for several things. It's used for energy. Uh, we talked about uh, how next we're going to go to this cellular respiration. So energy is going to be created uh, during cell respiration. And it's created from food. It's, it's created um, in photosynthetic plants uh, and in, in non-photosynthetic organisms like us. So I, want, I really want you to understand that we're going to go from carbon dioxide to sugar uh, during the Calvin cycle and during the Calvin cycle portion of photosynthesis. All right, so this is what the Calvin cycle looks like. It looks super intimidating, but it's it, it really shouldn't be. And we'll practice this in class a little bit. Um, you do not need to know the names of things like 3PGA. Um, although it's, I mean, it's really simple. We will emphasize a few of them, but I don't need you to know all the various chemical intermediate names. That's that's not um, it's not something that we need to know at this point. What you do need to know is that there's a certain input, a certain reactant that goes into the Calvin cycle, and that is uh, carbon dioxide. We just mentioned that. Okay, so uh, carbon dioxide is going to be attached to uh, the leftover intermediate. So this is a this is the Calvin cycle. So it's a cycle. That's why we have this, you know, sort of circular pathway. It's what creates a cycle. So at the end of the cycle, kind of starting at the back, you'll have this uh, five carbon sugar. So by five carbon sugar, I mean one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so when you, when you add carbon dioxide to this five carbon uh, kind of leftover product named RUBP, what you get is this thing right here. It's a six carbon intermediate. Again, you don't need to know the name of this intermediate. It's not important for our knowledge of the actual cycle. What you should know though is that this intermediate quickly breaks down and it basically snaps in half. So you can imagine this uh, snapping in half occurring right here. And what you're left over with is twice as much, right, because it snaps in half. So instead of having three six carbon uh, intermediates, you now have six three carbons. So one to three carbons, and there's six altogether here. So you're basically doubling it by breaking it in half. Again, this thing is called PGA, but you do not need to know that for your test. Okay, you don't need to know those intermediates. These molecules are changing. As, as the Calvin cycle is, is happening, the intermediates are changing. That's what I really want to emphasize. But I do want to emphasize again here this idea of the input. In the previous slide, I showed you that NADPH and ATP are brought over from the light reactions. These are the reasons that they're brought over from the light reactions, guys. That they, they do something to these molecules, and that's why they're necessary. So ATP, shown right here, is going to be important for in some way altering these, um, these three carbon compounds. NADPH, which carries two electrons, is also going to give those electrons to these uh, molecules and th th therefore it's going to revert back to NADP+. Okay? So understand this. ATP, the energy associated, associated with it, and NADPH, the electrons, which are a en form of energy, are going to be added to this to create this. Okay, so this is high energy 
high energy intermediate. Okay, this high energy intermediate is called G3P. Again, you don't need to know that name, although that's probably one of the more important names that you would know if you go on to do AP biology and, and whatnot. We'll talk about that, but um, G3P is ultimately what the Calvin cycle makes. It's a uh, precursor to sugar. So by precursor to sugar, what I mean is G3P ultimately goes on to make sugar. Okay. Um, so again, at this point, you have six of these uh, intermediate products. One of them, and only one of them, is an output. Okay. So only one of these G3Ps are going to go on to the plant to be used as energy, to be used to make cellulose, to be used to make starch. Okay. That's it. One sixth, one small percentage is going to go to the plant. This is this is the other important part here, guys. The other five sixths is going to go on to recreate this thing called RUBP. So the reason the Calvin cycle is a cycle is because most of the G3P right here that's made goes on to regenerate this uh, leftover material, this RUBP. So most of, the, most, of the pro most of the product of this process is going on to keep the cycle going. This is a, a continuous process, a continuous process. So it's going to keep on, um, co keep on making the, the RUBP that's necessary to keep this process going. Okay, so you need ATP at certain steps, you need NADPH at certain steps, you actually need ATP over here too, you need ATP twice in this process. Okay, carbon dioxide in, G3P sugar out, ATP necessary, NADPH necessary. That's, that's the extent of it. You do, not, you do not need to know the names of these intermediates, I want you to understand the process. And we'll go over this again in class, so if you don't get it from the screencast, um, we'll, we will repeat this in class several times, and you also have the PEMCAST notes. Okay, moving on to a, a final overview. This is two, essentially two different processes occurring in overall photosynthesis. On the first hand, on the one hand, you have uh, the light reactions. On the second hand, you have Calvin cycle. Each has different inputs or reactants. For the light reactions, one of the major inputs is water. You now know that water is split to provide electrons for the photosystems. You know that light is necessary to recharge those electrons at certain uh, parts to get them excited. Because of the splitting of water, you, know, you now know that oxygen is a byproduct, a waste product of the light reactions of photosynthesis, and so the plant gets rid of that. You now know that ATP is made in the light reactions, okay, and goes on to be used in the Calvin cycle. Same thing with NADPH. It is made in the light reactions and goes on to be used in the Calvin cycle. Now the Calvin cycle is going to do its thing. It's a cycle. That's why we have this little circular motion here. It keeps repeating itself. Not only does it make sugars, which is the major output for the Calvin cycle, but it also makes this stuff called RUBP, which allows the cycle to continue itself repeatedly. Okay, that's going to keep on happening as long as you have the light reactions over here occurring. Once sugar is made for these many different functions, these are the functions of sugar in plants, once sugar is made, you, you have leftover low energy components, one of which is ADP. Another one is NADP plus. Okay, so you have high energy up here and low energy here. We talked about how in the light reactions, ADP is coupled with phosphate here to make ATP. So that's how you get this ATP out of here. You also learn that in the light reactions, NADP plus receives two electrons and a hydrogen 
to go on to become NADPH. So lots of material here, but actually a, a really very kind of simple uh, process in the end uh, and how it logically flows and how things are created in one aspect and used in another. Okay, and so it's a cycle. So these things are used and then made used and then made okay so keep that in mind as you're going through this and again make sure you come and see me with any questions so that's the calvin cycle and really a, um, a final overview of um, the things that are going to occur in both the light reactions and the calvin cycle in photosynthesis so remember this whole process together is photosynthesis it's just broken down into two parts Var various inputs and outputs for each part okay We'll talk about it again. Take care.